Well, this, uh, this is where you put it in the fire, and uh, it burns this way into the core of the barrel, and and uh, it burns the the core burner is insulated on its first layer on the inside um, with vermiculite and. Um, um, Bentonite? Oh, huh? Bentonite? And, yeah, and bentonite. Vermiculite and bentonite. Actually, I use perlite, which is similar. And then the outside layer of this burner shield is just, therm just for more thermal mass, is sand, sand and gravel. And that keeps the inside hot as you're burning, so it rises more. This is the burner. And the flame can come up and is deflected out to the sides at the top on this layer of, of stainless steel. Hopefully it's, it's cool enough by then so it doesn't burn the stainless steel. And then it heats the coil. Um, and the coil takes away enough, takes away more energy from the, or temperature, more heat from the, from the exhaust. So it, it goes down on the outside of the barrel, I mean on the outside of the burner, and into the chimney, uh, which is uh, on the other side of this barrel container in the floor and then the uh, exhaust gas goes from there under the floor past the um, first clean out here uh, and this and the exhaust then continues on in a 90 degree bend over to uh, the third the second clean out over here and uh, then up continues up after the, this this uh, union that we welded together um, and I've got an accelerator fan here from an old furnace um, to pull air into the accelerator fan and up at an angle to increase the, uh, the flow if it's needed when, you, when the whole system is cool. Uh, when it's cool it doesn't have as much draft especially over here and it does need some draft here too especially in, in, cold, in really cold weather. Uh, we found that out from our, our existing rock stove. Um, this is Schedule 80 um, gas pipe, uh, 6 inch. It's extra heavy. I wish I, it wouldn't be so heavy, but it's easy to weld that way. Um, you can make a lot of extra uh, holes and get by with it. But um, the, we, when we had the cement poured, onto the chimney in the floor, I put a, um, I formed a, uh, a V uh, section to make it a lot thicker and come down along the sides of the, uh, of the pipe, the chimney, so it actually does conduct heat from the chimney to the concrete. Uh, problem with rocket mass heaters is that you have to get the heat to actually to bleed from the chimney uh, that you have in a, in a bench or in a bed or whatever with um, usually it's done with um, with cob with, with dirt um, or, or clay material and in this case I'm using concrete and the concrete is a is a very good conductor of heat um, compared to sand and soil so it also has quite a bit of thermal mass so we hope that this uh, this system works fairly well this way uh, the rocket mass heater in our house, after the fact, I poured concrete along the chimney. I also have a steel chimney there, it's just 8 inch. And, um, and it really does work a lot better to have concrete in contact with the chimney. It pulls the heat away and warms the house, holds the heat a lot longer. I'll tell about the coil that uh, get, robs heat from the combustion. In, and then uh, heats up a tank that's above the rock stove, uh, sitting in a, its own tank closet right above us here. Um, we're going to use thermal siphoning for that, and uh, that's what this coil is, is here for. And then the uh, um, when that's that we found that the tank like that for an average fire, I would suspect average. 
We were very easily uh, able to keep our tank in uh, our existing uh, mass heater in our house uh, between 80 degrees and 85 degrees uh, all winter, last this past winter. It's not hard to do. You just, uh, uh, we have a pump and a switch. There'll be a switch here. When the water in the tank gets, uh, gets warm, and you can kind of tell when it is, you can turn that switch on and it'll run water from uh, that comes from off of this instead of going into the storage tank it goes into the PEX pump and heats the floor. This is our uh, our PEX loops are right here tied together. Can you see the, see through that? Um, and that's where we'll also have our backup heating for the whole house. The whole house backup uh, furnace is nothing more than a uh, 13 amp 220 volt inline water heater that's uh, about this big and that uh, we figured that that's enough I could have gone 30 amp but I decided to go with the smaller one because uh, it can be on and run a long time if it wants to so that if the rocket mass heater is not running we do want some heat to get into the floor and it'll take water from the tank and circulate it through the floor after it goes through our uh, inline heater. And the thermostat will be set at about 50 or 45 degrees for that purpose to run that uh, system. And it'll only come on when the pump is on because these, uh, these inline heaters are flow activated. Um, and that should suffice to keep this place cozy, or from, at least from freezing, if, uh, if people have to be gone for a long period of time, and the sun doesn't shine like it does sometimes for a week in the wintertime, temperatures can be quite cold in Montana in the wintertime, if those two things go together. We don't expect this backup heat system to be on very long, but I think 13 amps is adequate to, uh, to keep that temperature. Uh, with the, all that we've got here for thermal mass and the earth to help keep it warm.